SEMA show, each member of the V8 Speed and Resto and V8 TV crew is charged with picking a car that they think is pretty unique, and I found the one that I like. I'm here with Tyler Scarf, and we are standing in front of the Tyrant? The Tyrant, yes. Oh, man. Off the scale. Tell Thank, us a little bit about you. it. Thank you. It's a 1966 Chrysler Imperial. Um, it's about 3,500 hours into the car. The concept was, you know, uh, kind of BMW M5 inspired old school car. Uh, we picked the Chrysler, it was something unique. Uh, you don't see a lot of them. Um, and we kind of said, well, what would SRT have done to this car if they existed back in 1966? There's some really neat features on the car, you know, from the glass covered headlights to all the bright work and, and different different lines that are on the car that you don't really notice because they don't no one no one restores these and drives them around. They're yeah. they're they're uh, not a popular car. Being a four door, even you know, kind of a step in in that into the unknown. You know, how is this going to be received? Are people going to like it? So let's let's get a chassis under it. Let's put some power in it. Something unique that suits the size of the car, and let's shave some a ton of weight off because the curb weight on this thing was. Heavy, heavy, over 5,500 pounds. Well, I have a bunch of questions already. Uh, first of all, this is a four-door. I mean, people don't build four-doors, but it doesn't look so much like a stodgy four-door because it's a hard top, first right, of all. Right. So there's no pillar with the glass. So it's kind of a, I don't want to say a sporty four-door, but it's a stylish it's one. It's a stylish one, yeah. Uh, but where do you find parts for the restoration aspect of this? That was extremely difficult. There's, there's no one makes reproduction parts for this car. Um, from like even the rubbers are all universal seals and stuff on the car. Um, we actually lucked into getting parts from the same guy that supplied the Green Hornet movie crew with some oh. of the stuff for there. We, we found his his name and number and got some of the stuff we couldn't couldn't uh, use off the original car. Um, and then into the sheet metal, we had to hand fab everything. So from door skins to rear quarter panels, it's all hand formed. So. Now to take a, uh, a four-door, you know, upscale classic luxury car that was a land barge from the 60s right. and, and make it into a performance aggressive car, uh, I guess let's start with the bottom up. What chassis did you use? It's our own chassis. Um, we design and build and laser cut everything in-house. Um, nice. Basically, we base it off of Speedtech Performance. They just released a universal front stub okay. based on their Camaro subframe. Yeah, nice So yeah, yeah, it's got the AFX spindles that are based off yeah. the, the Corvette. Um, that's what we used in the front. We plotted out all the factory body locations and just started designing our frame from there. Uh, everything's four-sided, laser cut, interconnecting, welded on the frame table. Rear suspension's a torque arm uh, with a Watts link and a full floater Ford 9-inch. Awesome. And for the drive line now, we're looking at an SRT motor? It is uh, a Gen 3 Viper SRT10 motor uh, with a Paxton supercharger on it. And behind that's a TCI 6X six-speed with the paddle shifters and the tap shift in the car. Do we have any idea of power numbers in this package? It's about 720. 720. Um, it should be another 10%, give or take, with the water meth injection turned on from Snow Performance. But you're going for torque. Yeah, it, torque. And I mean, it's it, like you said, on a cloud, this is a refined cloud, right? We, we don't want to just hit the thing with a ton of right, power. We just a want a nice, nice power band. Yeah. It's usable power. And it's going to be a fun car to, to put through its paces on the track and, and uh, on the street. What did you do for wheel, tire, brake? Uh, wheel, tire, and brake, it's the, the Corvette Willwood uh, WS6, WS4 front and rear brakes. And wheels and tires are uh, shot, did uh, three-piece vectors for the car. Nice. And it's Nitto Invos. What I notice is it's a waffle pattern spoke but it's beefy enough to where it doesn't get lost into the big car. Right, right, and you know, five spokes and stuff, anything with two open a wheel. We played around with a lot of, of renderings with Ben Hermance and we, we had to have a multi-spoke wheel, had to get, yeah. get that in there, because the car is so big. Right, yeah, it would look like it was on toothpicks otherwise. Right, right. Uh, so Ben Hermance, uh, a really talented designer, he helped you with the exterior. There's a lot of tricks here. Yeah, there is. We, uh, we kind of threw all our ideas together and he came up with some really neat stuff for it. Uh, we did, the grill is, is not stock. We hand fabricated the grill. The, he, the, the covered headlights are factory. Um, we sucked in the bumpers front and rear. We made the hood. We did a little uh, duckbill spoiler on the back. Um, and even in the, in the back, in the chrome bright work, the fuel door, we did a, a hidden reverse light ring in there and Digitales did custom LEDs for the, for the taillights. So we got a bunch of power, got a bunch of style. Uh, and being a giant Chrysler, I mean, it's got to be comfortable somehow. Oh yes, uh, we we decided to go with uh, Dodge Magnum 
interior. Oh, okay. Uh, we used the seats from the, from the Magnum in the front and rear, had them recovered. They're a really nice comfy seat. They're a little big, but the car is massive inside, so it fills it up properly. And that was the reason for the Magnum rear seat is because there was such a, a wide area to fill. And that car, being an open wagon, had side additions to the seat that so when you fold it down, it it filled the space. It filled the space. Yeah. So it, it, and it folds down and you can fit like a four by eight sheet of plywood in the back. Oh no kidding, so you kept that <laughs> oh, yeah. foldable yeah, yeah, it's functionality. Foldable. Uh, and the dashboard, now Chrysler's, in my opinion, always had a really crazy dash right. from the factory, but it probably didn't do what you wanted to do. No, the dash the dash was really neat, had a ton of features in it, but it was all cast metal, very heavy, and we really couldn't work with it. Cable operated stuff. Yeah, and cable operated and, and vacuum operated too. There's a ton yeah. of vacuum stuff in there. So what we did is we basically used that as a, as a guideline and fabricated all the dash panels out of sheet metal and then machined all the face plates that hold all the switches and the gauges from uh, Speed Hut did a wicked set of gauges for the car. Um, and it's got all the modern modern conveniences, cruise control, power seats, power everything. Sure, sure. Well, I thought for a long time it'd be fun uh, to do a four-door. My initial platform uh, I was thinking about was like a GMA body, you know, because you could buy like a, an off-brand, like an Oldsmobile Cutlass four-door. Right. But get bolt-on parts that are compatible with it, and then you can take the family along and build something, you know, not super expensive. You guys took it the other way and said, let's build a car, yeah. and it's just going to be big enough to bring everybody. Exactly. Yeah. Throw the whole family in it. Very cool. Well, congratulations and an excellent job. Thank you very much. Love to see something different. Thanks for bringing it out. Thanks for having us.